Man, let me tell you why vegans make the worst racist. Hey y'all, welcome to another Food for Thought. So, first of all, you should know, this is gonna be a little bit of a rant video. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit all over the place. I have things that I've been wanting to talk about for weeks now, and then I just got an email with some information that I really wanna share with you guys. So, you know, just buckle up and get ready for me to be talking about a lot of different things. Controvertible Snitch, who I think is going by Amber Crombie and Snitch, I'm not exactly sure, but I caught a little bit of his live stream yesterday and he said some really nice things about my channel. He brought up, you know, back when Vegan Gaines was being, you know, a jerk and there were lots of little Gainesians running around <laughs> on the site saying things about like, you know, just talking about violent, horribly violent things. And, you know, he just pointed out the fact that um, he was just really happy about the fact that I maintained, you know, a sense of humor about the whole thing and was able to keep a smile even though there was a lot of stupidity floating around me. And I know that some people are triggered by the idea of stupidity, but you know what? You're gonna have to back up because there's some stupid, 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 stupid stupidity that's been going on these past couple of days, especially around what was happening in Charlottesville, Virginia. I also am gonna talk about vegan cheetah a little bit and juice, you're gonna have to get mad me. You made a whole video talking about the fact that people shouldn't talk about vegan cheetah and you must have mentioned vegan cheetah's name 60 times. I will go back and I will watch that video and I will count how many times you say vegan cheetah's name. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to that video and I'm going to ask one of the viewers on this channel to count how many times Juice mentions vegan cheetah's name in the video where he says we should stop talking about vegan cheetah. And now I'm going to talk about vegan cheetah. Vegan cheetah has been banned from you now which apparently is has been really his bread and butter over the past I don't know few months he's been showing up I think he was uh, actually showing up as the largest earner on you now and he was certainly showing up as one of their you know top viewed folks on you now he's apparently been on the platform for a really long time so it's really been a blow to him to have that platform taken away not exactly clear on what cheetah is gonna do now but i will say this cheetah when in your rant about having your platform taken away you start mentioning things like social justice warriors and people on the left. And one of the people who kind of stood by you, stuck his neck out and got a lot of criticism from it is someone who you claim to be a social justice warrior superstar and certainly part of the left. Um, you know, it just, it just, um, just know what side your bread is buttered on, dude. Just know what side your bread is buttered on. And I feel like I've supported you a lot and, you know, back that up with, you know, clicking and uh, lots and lots of likes. Lots and lots of likes. So please, dude, um, you know, it's not like you have to apologize to me personally for bad mouthing progressive, bad mouthing the left, but just you know, at least be honest at the fact that there are people who are coming from all kinds of political perspectives who have supported you, and you should say that. There's been a fair amount of criticism coming at Mod Vegan, and I think I already mentioned Mod Vegan, but I'm really, really surprised at the amount of hate that Mod Vegan has gotten by simply posing a theory about what it means to be on the right side of history. And if people who feel like they are advocates of free speech, the, you know, protectors of free speech, are not <laughs> being hypocrites, being a little bit hypocritical when they say, you know, don't say these things, when they say don't, I mean, when your criticism is don't speak this way, your criticism is when you do this, you're doing this, right? You're just, you know, just know what you're talking about, right? Find a political position, find a reason for it, right? Find some reasoning, find a value, and just kind of live the value, all right? This whole idea of bashing people simply because they're on the left or assuming people are on the left, 
And that's the next thing I want to talk about. I'm really blown away by the number of people who assume that I am on the left or assume that I am on, that I am a progressive simply because I voice values, because I, you know, articulate a, sel a set of values. If you have found yourself positioned in the place where you identify your enemy for the amount of good they profess in the world, you might be on the wrong side. Like, if you're identifying values with the group that is not the group you are part of, you might be on the wrong side. For example, the people who were at the Charlottesville March, for example, the good people that we talk about. If you look to your left and you see a Nazi, and if you look to your right and you see someone carrying the Confederate flag and wearing a white hood of the KKK, and you look behind you and the person is, you know, professing to be, you know, some other, you know, radical extremist group, and you are in the middle saying, well, I'm not any of those things. I just stand for the things that those groups stand for. We have a lot of things in common. You might be on the wrong side. Not to tell anybody how to live their life, but if you're upset, by being called a Nazi, if you're upset by being called a Klan's member, but you roll with Nazis and Klan's members, you might want to rethink who you're hanging out with. Vlog like no one is watching who, and I want to say thank you first of all, vlog like no one's watching. You've been a supporter of the channel. You've been watching a lot of the videos. You comment regularly and often have really intelligent things to say. I also want to say that I appreciate uh, going to your vlog and hearing the things that you You've had to say and I hope that you feel when I am making comments on your vlogs that you know I'm saying things that are intelligent and trying to really add to the conversation that you're trying to be a part of. Recently vlog like no one's watching made a video basically saying that um, often when we go and we hear things that people have to say we have a knee-jerk reaction where we want to disagree we want to attack that person and he proposes this idea of treating listening to other people listening to people who have ideas that are different than ours as if we were you know visiting another country which i think is a really cool thing right you're going to see things, you're going to hear things that are completely foreign to you, but you're going to embrace them because you've stepped into that experience wanting to be part of something new. You come to a video, you come to watch my channel, for example, you know that I'm gonna have political views that are different than yours. Maybe you can try to appreciate them as if you were visiting another country. This is how we avoid living in those echo chambers that people are constantly accusing me and others on the left of always being a part of. But if your knee-jerk reaction to hearing things that you don't agree with is to double down on your own beliefs, then you might be the person who is um, living in the echo chamber. I wanna get a little bit more into this and I wanna offer this directly to uh, vlog like no one's watching and I'm gonna offer this to you publicly um, not to kinda of call you out, but I think that there are a lot of people who can benefit from hearing this. If your assumption is that most people aren't moving through the world, hearing the views of others, learning about the views of others, being understanding of the views of others, you might want to rethink who you've been spending time with. Because in my experience, that's most of the people that I spend time with. And I spend time with all kinds of people. I'm an organizer by trade, and part of being an organizer is taking disparate people with disparate ideas and helping to find common ground to be able to accomplish collective tasks. You live helping people to live by their values, right? So I'm not imposing a view on people. I don't walk in waving the communist flag as someone uh, accused me recently of doing. I walk in asking people what are their interests, what is it that they want to do, what is it about this specific thing that they want to, you know, that they want to avoid that, that they want to do something different, and then finding a way for them to do that together, losing using their uh, collective power, right? So if you are living a life where you're not 
working with people who are willing to listen to each other, where you're not working with people who are respectful of each other, get out of that group. Go find another group of people to be with. So um, a lot of you know that I spend a fair amount of time uh, with folks at the Bog Center, and the Bog Center puts out a monthly newsletter called Living for Change News. And in a recent article by Shay Howell, who is, uh, you know, a renowned community organizer and activist, talks about an incident that happened in the city of Greensboro, North Carolina, I believe, yes, it's Greensboro, North Carolina, and it's something known as the Greensboro Massacre. And what happened was a group of people who were opposed to the Klan and the Nazis in 1979 uh, gathered in a public place to protest the, uh, the presence of these organizations in their city. Um, at some point during the gathering, the police pulled back. Shortly thereafter, a truckload of Klansmen and neo-Nazis pulled up, pulled out guns, and began firing into the crowd. Now, they killed five of the organizers and wounded ten others, and the shootings were captured on a reporter's videotape. Um, in the state and federal criminal trials that followed, all white juries found the KKK and Nazis not guilty. In 1985, a civil jury found two police officers and six Klansmen and Nazis liable for wrongful death, and one of those killed, and for the assault and battery of two survivors. So, um, you know, we're talking about something that happened in 1979, that's basically 1980, um, and these trials following in the, in the, in the 80s to, to mid-80s, you know, we're talking about, this is when Ronald Reagan is present. So um, those of you who think that the structural racism, <laughs> when we talk about structural racism, that's it. Structural racism doesn't find Nazis and Klan's members guilty for killing five people and for wounding 10 others. And only in a civil trial, five years after the fact, is anyone uh, found guilty of anyone, and no one was found guilty of murder. So we're, that's, the, that's the world that we're talking about. And, and you know, maybe that's me. Maybe that's because that's something that comes out of my adult life, right? In 1985, I was adult. I was, I was an adult. I was in college when, when this is happening, when this kind of structural racism is in place, and when this kind of structural racism is commonplace. So, um, and this is, I'm going to call you out, vlog like no one's watching when I talked about um, uh, recently about the ongoing violence, the terrorism from groups like the KKK and the Nazis. I was accused of living in the past. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you know, if it's in my lifetime, I don't consider it the past. Maybe you're young enough that you can consider, you know, the 80s, you know, the long ago past. But, you know, that was when I was, you know, I consider it, I was kind of in my prime. So that's the history that I'm stepping out of. And that's the history that I'm often trying to link incidents that happen in the presence to, right? So I don't, you don't have to go back that far to have an incident of terrorism on you, you know, U.S. soil that goes completely unpunished punished by the state and federal government, right? So just, you know, this is, this is why I, this is why this video started with the, you know, the idea that vegans make the worst racist because vegans understand that it is ideology that makes it possible for people to kill or have killed on their behalf and to eat certain animals when they are horrified at the notion of the killing and the consumption of other animals, right? It is ideology that keeps people consuming these products even though they know that they are terrible for their health. It is ideology that keeps people doing these, like in stuck in this cycle, even though they know that it's harmful for the planet. It's ideology that makes it possible for, you know, help people who consider themselves health experts experts to try to debunk a film that's simply pointing out some facts that might save some people's lives, uh, certainly the lives of some animals because you people will stop eating them, right? So when a vegan 
shows a lack of the analysis that is necessary to understand the ideology that makes racism possible even in the world we live in, even when it is so unnecessary, when it is so unnatural, right? When it, be it may benefit no one, ultimately, in the same way that con consuming animals really only, only benefits the people who are, you know, own, those, own the companies that are making those products, right? So if you can't understand, if you're a vegan and you can't understand that racism is something that is possible even though the racism itself is so illogical, Right? It is so illogical, but also understand that it's part of a system, right? And there are apparatuses that keep that ideology maintained, right? That keeps, keeps sending those same messages so that we have the same feelings about certain people or lack feelings about certain people in the same way that we lack feelings of certain species. Now, I don't want to be one of those people that says racism and speciesism is the same thing. They're different things. They play on uh, different, uh, different understandings, right? Speciesism is so possible because we know that that thing is small, smaller or that that thing is not as smart as we are or we believe that that thing is not as useful as we are, right? And the ideology that is in place for us to believe things about people because the color of their skin is different is based on a whole different set of fallacies, right? And the fact that the people who who are the targets of racism are other human beings, in some ways makes it worse because it's one thing to be fooled into thinking that an animal is less than we are, but to be fooled into thinking that another person is less than we are requires another level of denial, another insistence on maintaining one's comfort about uh, ideologies that make it possible for them to, you know, go out and buy stuff even though that they know the person who made them was exploited and maybe worked in harmful and dangerous conditions, right? So that's all I'm going to say about this. Like I said, this is a little bit of a rant and uh, a little bit off the cuff. I promised you guys that I was going to come back and I was going to have some conversations about Donald Trump and I was going to talk a little bit more about uh, Steve Bannon and I will be talking about those things. There's also other things now, other developments. You know, we're now, you know, doubling down in Afghanistan, which goes against everything that Donald Trump promised when he was campaigning, right? So that's a whole other thing, right? And I do have some other uh, reviews of films that I want to share with you. But for now, that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto, big gun.